record to this computer. We are recording. Wonderful. And over to you. Right. Um, first off, just a tech check. Just want to make sure that people can see me, hear me, and the slides are showing. Looks good. Looks Loving good. that thumbs up. Right. So it's all downhill from here then. Um, I'm, I'm going to immediately sort of disrupt that very usual kind of PowerPoint presentation thing that you might have been expecting by asking if you have a QR reading device on you um, to scan that and follow the link, please. It's going to allow you to take part in certain aspects of this presentation to like give feedback, give your responses to certain questions that will come up, participate in word clouds, that sort of thing. So we'll just give people a couple of moments to give that a scan and see if they're able to join in. Woo, it works. Oh, that's good to hear. And that's a non-sticky <laughs> person. <laughs> Very good to hear. Good for me. Wonderful. Yep, I got it. Excellent. Oh, I'm loving the demo as well. Thank you, Ari. <laughs> okay, cool. So, um, staying connected and not letting lockdown drive you down. Now, talking a bit about stress, what it is, how it works, and some things that you could either implement yourself or particularly if you were working with, you had clients that were having difficulty managing all the change and all the uncertainty right now, some advice that you could perhaps share with others. Um, a little bit about me first. Um, Aaron's introduction was great. I work for Pavelka Limited. We're a health and wellbeing provider for corporates. Um, lots of sharing of information, education pieces, competitions and the like. Um, and loads of loads of tech products that we are endlessly bothering six two about. Um, so always massive respect and thanks to them. Uh, me, uh, my background is in science. I'm a biochemist by trade, uh, specialising in genetics and cell biology. Then went to teach in secondary schools for ten years, uh, training other teachers, uh, department leads, all that sort of thing. And as it says there. I have played sports before as well. Uh, so my background in terms of health and well-being is fairly rounded and I'm hoping to share a little bit of that with you guys today. So my first question for you guys, what has been stressing you today? We've got weather up. That was an audience plant by myself. HMRC, powerful. I like that. The heat, absolutely. Kids, strong answer there. Lack of a beer garden. Yeah, I'm feeling that. Meeting, yeah, absolutely. Nothing, that's a lovely answer. Who got that down? Oh, fantastic. What, what I'm driving at with this is that there are lots and lots of different stressors in our environment, things that put a little bit of a squeeze on us and make us feel negatively. But you sort of look at the things we've got up there, the weather, we can't control it, can't do anything about it. Right now, the lack of a beer garden, unless you are going to hit B&Q like Ray Mears, it's unlikely to happen in the very near future. Um, what we've got here is a situation where, if you look at these things, stress is always going to exist in our lives. Those sort of negative influences on us, they're not going anywhere, they're not going away. But if we know how to prepare ourselves, we can increase our resilience so some of these things don't impact us in the way that they perhaps would have otherwise. So a, a, little bit of, a little bit of nerd information in terms of like what stress is. It is our body's biological response to danger. Now the word danger sounds really strong, um, but you have to remember that whilst we live in this sort of high tech information age, transport technology roofs over our heads, our biology was hardwired hundreds of thousands of years ago when we were hiding in caves from the sun and shaking sticks at things. 
Um, and our body still responds in the same way, even though the stresses and the tensions that we're feeling now, society has progressed so much further. Um, and when we're stressed, our body releases two key hormones. Now, adrenaline on the right there, most people are quite familiar with. But cortisol, the one on the left, is perhaps more interesting in terms of its effects and the things that stress will then do through that to impact you. So we've got there like inflammation of organs. Great if you're in a life and death fight and your organs need protection. Bad in terms of your digestive system. Um, if you know anyone that's got like Crohn's or gastroenteritis, stress is a huge trigger for those things um, and can cause like full scale breakdown of their organ systems. Um, blood sugar spikes, fat breakdowns, stress is linked very strongly to type 2 diabetes uh, because it messes with the way that sugar is transferred in and out of your cells and organs that obviously can have huge long-term health effects but the bottom one is the most interesting one lower cognitive function in a nutshell the idea is is that for short periods of time stress makes you stupid it actually like deactivates parts of your brain and turns you a little bit into that Neanderthal living in the cave thousands of years ago. Um, what actually goes on is that your frontal lobe, the bit that sticks out at the front here to varying degrees in all of us, um, usually is the key driver of your thinking. It contains your ability to judge risk, your ability to manage your attention and direct it, your ability to manage your emotions. That's what we call executive function. Effectively, it's the, it's the master admin of your brain. It's like running everything. It's got access to all things and can pick and choose what's going to work and what's not going to work. When we're stressed, though, that shuts down. And something called the temporal lobe, our limbic system, takes over. And that is full of three very clear signals. Signal one is whatever the problem is, punch it in the face. <laughs> Signal two is to run, get as far away from that problem as you possibly can. And the third signal is to like go and freeze and do absolutely nothing. Um, and it's, it's a horrible irony that even though our, our society, the way we live our lives has evolved so much from the Iron Age or the Stone Age, um, our biology is so hardwired that we react in the same way as the Neanderthals and the homo erectus with their hysterical name millions of years ago um a really good example of this impacting your thinking is if you've ever been in like a really tense conversation or an argument and then two minutes after it's finished that perfect thing that you should have said pops into your head that magical sentence or word that would have shut them down and had you crowned the king of conversation forever. Um, why couldn't you think of it two minutes before? Like, why is it only just dawning on you now? And it's because of this. The stress shut down your frontal lobe. You were unable to then light up and access the part of your brain storing that memory or problem solving ability. And you were just reduced to sort of caveman grunting and shouting and threats with the other person. Um, so stress actively makes us less intelligent in the moment, although the effect is transient and it can be, it can be diverted, which hopefully is what we're going to get to. Um, the broad sort of global effects of this, when you're stressed, your complex problem solving ability starts to get depressed and eventually shut out. You get a bias towards immediate comfort and safety you will choose rather than cleaning the house because you're stressed to get under a blanket and eat that tub of Ben and Jerry's that's been sitting in the ice cream, uh, been sitting in the freezer for a little while. Um, you will choose to put off that phone call to your parents that you don't really want to make because you know it's going to be difficult. Even though it will become more difficult by putting it off, your brain doesn't care. Your brain is not thinking rationally. So you quickly move to procrastination. It puts strain on your relationships and it puts you through a bit of emotional turmoil. Um, but my company, hopefully, if the advice turns out to be any good, tries to help people sort of avoid all that by implementing simple, easy to follow steps from our four elements, true health, eat, sweat, think, connect. 
So the idea being that by priming ourselves with the right things in these four areas of our health, that we can become more resilient, better connected with the people around us, and the impacts of stress will be felt a lot less acutely. So another question for you guys. You can see the food groups up in the background there. Has your diet included something from all of those today? Ooh, like the way that graph's coming up, like that dancing wheel of doom there. Uh, so some of us have done very well and some of us have done less well. Now that might seem like a really small thing, but our diet has a huge impact on our mental well-being. By eating the right things, we can increase the concentrations of dopamine and positive happy good time neurotransmitters in our brain. Um, and these are my quick tips for like really easy entry level, few things you can put into your diet that will have a huge impact on your mental well-being. So the first one, alarm clock water. The idea is, is that when your alarm clock goes off in the morning and you get up, you don't reach for the half empty can of Fosters that's sitting on the bedside table. You don't go immediately to the coffee, although that's absolutely fine right after. You drink yourself a glass up to, if you can stand it, a pint of water straight away. Now, the reason for that is that overnight, your brain's been going overtime, dreaming, dreaming, repairing, cleaning itself, doing all sorts of important business. Those processes use up water. and Your brain actually loses mass. That leads to a lower ability to deal and flush out cortisol, the stress hormone. It also is one of the leading causes of headaches through the day. You know, like those tension ones you get like all around here, all through there. Well, what's happening is your brain mass is shrinking and it's pulling away from your skull and your blood brain barrier, which immediately like lights up in pain all across there. And then the sounds of people's voices, the flickering of lights, all of that stuff becomes very difficult to deal with. Um, but by keeping hydrated right from the word go, we can avoid all that and get greater access to our brain's machinery. In terms of nutrients, the key ones for keeping yourself happy, zinc, magnesium, aspartate, healthy fats, and foods with vitamin D. That is a lot of words. But essentially, you want things with green leaves, um, you want nuts, seeds, um, nut-colored mushrooms, and if you do eat that sort of thing, seafood is full of these things as well. So getting a good balance of those gives your brain the right tools to make dopamine, to make serotonin and oxytocin. So the amount of those that you're producing will be optimal and you will feel better as a result. They've got, in terms of structure and function, they're very similar to like the products of opiates. So like ketamine and like um, heroin and the like. So when good things are happening, your brain literally doses you with tiny little bits of opiates to make you feel better. So why not eat the right things so our body can produce as much of that as possible and we can feel great? Who has exercised today? Oh, people getting in really quickly with the yeses. I'm loving that. That's not bad. That is not bad. I, do you know what? Some days, like particularly at the moment where you're hunched over the screen all day and the calls just keep coming in and it's one thing after another, like it's really easy to go, I'll do that tomorrow. So well done to like just over half of us that fit it in today. Um, in terms of your mental well-being, this is really key. Now, it doesn't have to be like doing backflips and burpees and like throwing atlas stones in the air or anything like that like just walking is good enough and um, we'll talk about why in a second um now i i usually get a little bit of flack at this bit so i'm gonna in terms of the sweat i'm gonna put in like a huge disclaimer i am not here to like rag on or talk down cardio or whatever particular form of exercise you like they are all effective they all increase levels of dopamine and stuff in your brain they're all good for your cardiovascular health and your lifespan, your risk of diabetes. But because today I'm talking about stress and I'm talking about lowering your cortisol level, 
not all exercise is equal. And sadly, long form steady state cardio, so you're jogging, you're running, you're cycling, you're rowing, swimming if you're swimming for long periods of time, your body responds to those as though you're in mortal danger. It doesn't know that you're running to get fitter. It thinks you're running because there's a knife wielding maniac behind you. And so it ups the cortisol level thinking you're in some sort of horrible scenario. Like, um, and that obviously brings with it all the negative effects of cortisol that we mentioned earlier. Um, try answering questions from a quiz or even just like basic, where is this questions from your partner when you get in from a long run? It's not just that you're out of breath. It's that your front brain is shut down. Like those effects of cortisol are being felt. So the exercise that works to lower it is uh, interval training and resistance training. So lifting weights, bands, body weight training, whatever it is. Those two things are particularly good at working you hard enough to raise the good chemicals, but not working you long enough to boost the bad ones. In terms of what that looks like, um, I, would, I would say, again, like, in terms of your general fitness, nothing's going to beat that long steady state cardio. But if it's your mental well-being you're looking to work, swap the long runs, swap the cycles for interval training or long walks. Walking happily is easy enough that you don't raise cortisol, but it keeps you moving enough to give you a kick in your dopamine levels. So it's fantastic. Intensity, you see that woman there like killing herself on the mat to the left hand side. Um, it's that idea of in, like where you work hard for a short period, rest for a short period, and you keep swapping between the two. Those boosts of hard work will again raise the positive chemicals in our brain, but the gaps and the spaces mean that the cortisol level doesn't build up like it does doing steady state. If the running, the cycling, the jogging is your thing, it's what you like. Think about not exercising to exhaustion. Um, so maybe turning down the intensity of your workout just while you're worried about your mental health. When you're worried about your physical health, go straight back to flogging yourself and working as hard as you can. And resistance, the last one, has a particularly interesting effect. Um, I know we don't always equate bodybuilders with um, low stress. Um, but there are other chemical reasons for that. For the rest of us, um, body weight training, as well as the hard work that boosts your dopamine, it causes something called POEC, which in a weird sciencey way, I don't know why the letters are the wrong way around, is post-exercise oxygen consumption. Now, what that means is, is that you have pushed your body further than the amount of oxygen in you allows. Now in running, that's that bit at the end, you know, where you're knackered and you're trying to get your breath back and you're all sweaty. Um, that period is actually when your body is breaking down fats and your body's releasing dopamine. Now for resistance training, for weights or body weight or whatever, that can last up to 48 hours. So a weight training workout can have like stress lowering effects for up to two days after that workout. Um, obviously the steroid heads and that in the gym, they don't always get that effect, but the rest of us can very much enjoy that. Um, now more directly back onto the brain, how many hours sleep did you get last night? Five, seven, nine, all seven and a half. I'm loving the specifics. Excellent. So in this next section, my second to last bit, we're going to talk specifically about mindfulness. Um, but there is one mindfulness technique that works for lowering stress better than any other. And it is getting as full a night's sleep as you're able. Um, it took scientists far longer than it should have to figure out what sleep's actually doing inside of your head. We knew for a really long time that if you didn't sleep for like uh, two to four weeks at some point in that period, you would just suddenly drop dead like somebody had unplugged you. But we didn't know why. Um, 
And then somehow they managed to convince somebody to go to sleep in one of those MRI machines. And what they saw was overnight, the cells in their brain drifted apart and liquid from their spinal column washed everything out. So every time you have a thought or your brain sends a message during the day, waste products build up, uh, cortisol being one of those. And at night, that gets rinsed out and it's gone. But if you're not getting enough sleep and they're caused to build up, you're starting your next day at a higher cortisol level than you otherwise would do. So days and days on end of not getting enough sleep lead to you becoming crankier, you becoming less able to solve problems, you um, not having full function of your brain. So a good night's sleep is the most effective mindfulness and stress relieving tool that you can get. Difficult is in the real world, it's not quite as simple as saying to someone, hey, go get yourself a good night's sleep. Because uh, if you're like me, you do that thing where you lie there staring at the ceiling and your brain's telling you things like, hey, did you lock the front door? And is the oven on? Or did you send this email that you had to send? And it just like never ends. Um, so amongst other things, we'll quickly drop in some tips on how to make all that go away. <laughs> Um, but in terms of supporting your brain, uh, omega-3 oils are absolutely fantastic for supporting the production of brain cells. Um, you can see at the bottom some diagrams of cell membranes, um, and they're labeled there. You can see what the outside layers of your cells are actually made of. They're made of cholesterol. They're made of fats. Um, so all the time when we're being told, oh, man, you've got to cut those fats out of your diet, you've got to look out for that, watch out for them fats you're actually making yourself less able to produce new cells. Um, something that you see sometimes in cases of anorexia and bulimia, um, that lank, thin, tear away, break off hair is because they're not able to produce hair of the same quality because they don't have the fats. Dry, flaky skin uh, because you're not producing the quality of skin cells. And it's the same with your brain. And omega-3 oils are absolutely key for producing neurons, the ones in here. Uh, you will find those from oily fish. You can find them in supplements. There are mushrooms and nuts that contain those. So, you know, just like foodstuffs that I would like highly recommend. Again, the second one, if you're getting those leafy greens you mentioned earlier, that's all good. And the sleep hygiene. Um, the biggest things there are getting a period of device free time before you go to bed. Um, because mostly they produce blue and white light from the screens, similar to like the light from the sun. The caveman in us thinks, hey, I've got to be awake. We could be under attack. I've got to be ready. I've got to hunt. I've got to gather. And it boosts your cortisol level to keep you awake. You switch those devices to nighttime mode or you turn them off for 40 minutes before bed. Your brain's like, ah, oh, it's nighttime. I can get some shut eye and your cortisol level naturally drops. Uh, the second thing, they're brain dumping, have either, like depending on what works for you, a pad where you write down all those crazy thoughts, get them out of your head before you try to go to sleep, or a conversation with a partner, a loved one, or whoever, where you can like talk through all that mad stuff that's racing around your head before you try to go to sleep. That will boost your oxytocin level, and that sort of cancels out some of the cortisol and should therefore make it easier for you to drift off. I also go for a little bit of breathing right before bed. Um, it sounds like really weird Eastern alternative stuff, but the science is really key. Um, that focus on a mechanical motion is the basis of meditation. Like whether you're doing humming, whether you're, sitting in a certain pose and like trying to keep it, whether you're like reciting something, that focus on an easy mechanical task takes up brain space that could be filled with anxiety and naturally lowers your level of cortisol. I don't know how they convinced people to do these things. They did blood serum tests. They got people to do some breathing exercises and then immediately took some blood out of them, tested it, and the blood was lower in the people who'd just been doing the breathing exercises than in the people who hadn't. Um, extra bonus, the extra air that you're taking in by breathing deeply creates a slight high or buzz in your brain, 
uh, very similar to the effect of the dopamine of the serotonin. It's like a slight opiate effect. So if you do the heavy breathing for long enough, you will feel slightly high and it should help you drift off as well. Um, in terms of breathing pattern, nothing scientifically suggests that any one is better than another. Um, so if you were to just Google breathing exercises, pick the one that you feel will be least embarrassing for you if anyone were to see you doing it and then run with it and give it a try, see how that works. Right, and into my last section. Have you had an emotionally impactful conversation today? Have you had a conversation where someone really connected with you? That is a strong response, guys. Oh, can you repeat what the explanation of an emotionally impactful conversation was? I missed it because uh, the audio just went a bit. Oh, absolutely. It's one of those ones that is uh, on a personal level where you sort of share something or hear something uh, out of the ordinary that means something emotionally to one of the two of you. It could be something that like really makes you smile through the day, something that whether compassion is shown, um, anything really. Uh, the, the thing I'm leaning on here is a bit of humanist counseling that I was learning whilst I was teaching. The idea that we, particularly in this little pocket of the UK are polite, mannered, <laughs> and some of the most routinely insincere people on the planet. Um, you can see there three greetings that we use all the time. Hey, all right. Good morning. Oh, how are you getting on? And nobody ever means it ever. No one's ever really asking you if you're all right. No one's ever really wishing that everything in your morning is going to go just great. It's a societal convention. We're saying it because that's what you say before getting onto the point of the conversation. And while the words are very polite, it leads to shallow conversations. You say, all right, the person says, all right, back to you. And then you get back on to talking about whatever like operational thing you had at work. And it's not emotionally impactful. Now, why that matters is the release of those good chemicals in your brain that serotonin, the oxytocin, they're chemicals that are released during human like bonding emotionally and they have that opioid effect. So in terms of lowering stress, we want that. So what humanist counselors recommend is a follow-up. Pay attention to the way the person answers that question. Did they pause? Was their tone a little bit off? Did they seem flustered? And then use a follow-up like these on the screen and it then just opens the door to a slightly more impactful conversation. So like you say, oh, you're all right. And they go, yeah, all right. And you go, hey, do you know what? There was a little bit of a pause and you didn't seem too happy. Are you sure everything's okay? It could be that they just say, yeah, that's fine. But by giving them that opportunity, it could lead to a more impactful conversation. And then that could lead to that release of positive chemicals in your brain that we're talking about, and then hopefully a lowering of stress for both of you. Now, in terms of toxic relationships, there will be people who you've just handed to a license to like unload all sorts of stress on you. Um, and that might be more difficult for you. So you would want to apply that judiciously, would say. Um, and there are a couple of other ideas there as well. Like, when somebody is responding to a question that you've given them, try not to prep in your mind, try not to prep the thing you're going to say next. Uh, try sing along listening where as they say the words, you say them right after in your head. It really helps the words like sink in with you and try to read their body language. Like, do they really not want to talk to you right now? Or are they quite open for a conversation? Like just try and give that a read. Um, and then that is the lot. Um, I apologize for the huge like wealth of information that I just sort of opened the sluice gate on there. I hope at least some of it is impactful and helpful. And if anybody has any questions, I'd love to hear them. Yeah, um, that was super. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, oh, well, well, we've got Maddie's jumped straight in with the question. So I will, um, I will, yeah, 
let's go with Maddie's question. If I can just find the chat. Oh, no, Aaron, the chat? I wasn't asking a question. I was just clapping because I love Oh, it. right. Oh, okay, right. Fair enough. <laughs> but I did love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, do you know what? I, I can see a bit. I've been asked about, uh, oh, it's not a question. It's somebody who's um, pointing out how good their diet is. Uh, Linda, the ketogenic diet, that proportion of healthy fats. Fantastic. Absolutely loving it. Really good well, that, for the brain that, health. That very much to, I, I was, I, I don't want to get into the conversation because I could wax lyrically all night about it, but it, it does specifically work for me. And I think it's just at a certain age, it's actually started being the right diet for me. But I was going to ask you, what is your opinion on the keto diet then? I, oh. I assume from that enthusiasm, you do find it a good one. Oh, I would, in term, most, in terms of the science, there is like really strong, uh, there's a really strong benefit to most diets that you come across. And keto is no exception to that. It is in terms of the change of lifestyle. It's one of the most powerful weight loss tools, like yeah. um, shutting down of certain digestive operons, the awakening of other ones that have been dormant during that time. Um, for some people, um, and you're clearly not one of these, Due to genetic differences, it can be dangerous for like liver, liver health and diabetes and the like later down the line. But for other people, it has exactly the opposite effects. Yeah. Um, and if you are one of those people that it works for, like power yeah. to you and please keep going as long as you're happy. Thank you. No, it was a really good presentation. I'm, I'm from a similar background as you, but I'm a geneticist, gen geneticist and microbiologist, not cell biology, but you, you end up feeling like you're the doctor, know all, you know. <laughs> oh, do, how but, yeah, many? That, there's a lot of stuff in there that I've not heard before. It was really fascinating. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad you think that. And um, how many bizarre questions have you had about COVID over the last few months? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't. Uh, I haven't spoken to anybody. <laughs> I come on these <laughs> webinars. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! I'm Thanks pleased you've me. managed to avoid it, <laughs> um, James. I've I've got a question in, yeah, in sure. terms of um, in terms of like balancing the four elements because you know going through them in in that kind of level of detail, it's very hard to kind of argue with with any of them. Like I think we'd all want more of those things in in our life, um, but in terms of like balance, how do we kind of you know, do we, do we aim to do like one of each thing a day or, you know, um, how, how, how do you kind of start identifying where you, you need to kind of improve? Um, I would always like, I, I would urge anybody that's just like starting to like look at lifestyle, uh, whether it's your own or someone else's, because do you know what, at various times in our life, we're not looking for a change or we we're not looking for a big change. And other times we are looking to like tear it all down, set fire to it and start again. But for most people, I recommend starting with the think, um, mm. trying out breathing device, free time, sleep hygiene. I recommend like looking at a bit of those because very often, um, now we'll go with the stat cause it's quite powerful. Um, 80, 80 odd percent, the percentage hovers a bit depending on the source of us, we'll start diets and exercise plans and we will never reach the end of those plans. Um, and the reason is our headspace, uh, because I know from when I've been overweight and stuff in the past that I get into things with all the right intentions, but when the stress comes on, I'm like literally like dipping Doritos in ice cream and like shoveling them in my face. Um, <laughs> I know that I haven't had a good night's sleep. So today's workout is absolutely a no go. Um, so I would start with the think I would start with mm. giving yourself 40 minutes without the devices before bed, mm. perhaps trying the odd breathing exercise here and there. And like if, if you're into it and if it's something you feel will work for you, trying some gratitudes mm -hmm. takes two minutes, write down something that you're happy about from the day that's just passed. Um, bizarrely, uh, we are really, really achievement based creatures. And just by telling yourself that something good's happened, your brain goes, ta-da, and like really <laughs> those chemicals we're talking about and you'll get a little boost. And then the next day you'll be feeling slightly better. Yeah. That is then when you can start looking at taking small little chunks from the other elements, I think, and then trying to build out a much more rounded lifestyle. Like, start with this. Excellent. Can I add to that? And it might actually 
help, well, it might not help you, Aaron, but one of the things that I noticed up to a certain age, we all get into this, I've got to do my jog, I've got to do my exercise, and we go to bed almost having like a plan for the next day. I was, I was actually finding that was making me angry with myself and I would lose sleep overnight thinking, oh, I've got to get up and go to the gym. So I actually just stopped telling myself what I've got to do the next day and have found it so cathartic that I'll wake up in the morning and then decide what do I, what do I feel like right now? Mm. And that's, that's been a major mindset shift for me that has really helped me to worry about compartmentalizing what I've got to do, when I've got to do it, what have I got to eat? I've just choose to just brain dump, as I think the word you use, James, just get rid yeah. of it all at night. I don't care what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm just going to get a good night's sleep. So that's yeah. really helped me. Yeah. I mean, Linda, you, you know me um, well enough, I'd say. Um, and if, if you saw my um, Myers-Briggs profile, you'll, you'll, you'll quickly <laughs> see that. <laughs> Planning for me is like, um, oh, I know what I'm going to do in the next 20 minutes. <laughs> so. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I do apply a bit more rigidly my work and business life, but for my own <laughs> stuff that I know I've got to do, it's a, no, I don't want to think about it the night before. It just makes me depressed. <laughs> Yeah. A uh, question from Justin. Hi. Um, uh, the, it's, I really enjoy the talk, by the way. But there's one thing I would say. I, I think you've ignored one of the elephants in the room. And that is especially uh, topical, given what we've all been going through in the last 12 weeks. And that is alcohol. How does alcohol fit into this picture? It's a, it's a source of carbohydrate. Alcohol itself as a chemical contains two carbons and a whole bunch of hydrogens around it. Um, so anytime you're consuming alcohol, whether it be beer, shots, whatever, like whatever your tipple happens to be, you are taking in additional calories, essentially sugars. Um, so what I would bear in mind is like, you don't have to make a big thing of it, but just be aware of what you're drinking from a diet point of view. Um, because eventually like, it leads to the buildup of hydrogenated fats, the beer belly that's so well popularized and things like that. Mentally, it's got some really interesting things going on um, because it acts as a depressant for the front brain. Um, so that leads with the first two drinks, or first few, depending on your tolerance, uh, to a feeling of well being, relaxation, um, and ability to unwind. And in some of us, a greater ability to go to sleep talking about sleep um, however even at that level it's got a really interesting effect whereby your REM and deep sleep cycles get interrupted by the alcohol um, you may well have felt as I have in the past if you've had a few too many drinks when you wake up the next day you feel like you've never slept in your entire life um, because that sleep cycle isn't taking place as effectively as it should do that brainwashing that we were talking about never takes place. Um, so you wake up with elevated cortisol levels and perhaps that horrible guilt that sometimes plagues you after a few too many drinks, mm. where even if you remember everything that you did the day before, like you feel really bad about it anyway. Um, so yeah, the alcohol is a really interesting chemical in a health sense because actually low levels of it, like, um, say you to look at the Mediterranean diet where you finish your drink, finish your meal, you have like a little aperitif, something like that. Those low levels uh, thin the blood out, decrease blood pressure, relax strain on your heart, and lungs and the like. But anything more than that, and we're starting to talk about the interruption of sleep patterns, we're starting to talk about elevated cortisol and the like. Um, so in terms of talking about alcohol, uh, my the short answer would be, it's complicated. Um, <laughs> uh, Boy, that, uh, what plays why you didn't go there, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could do the whole talk just on the booze. <laughs> <Really>. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, James, thank you very much for that. That was, uh, that was brilliant. Um, we are running uh, uh, yeah, the, the little intro beforehand, um, but uh, Karina, um, Karina's talk is about... Um, uh, not staying connected and not letting uh, lockdown. Sorry, no, it's not. Um, <laughs> it's not, it's not. <laughs> Sorry, Karina, I totally stole your thunder. Yeah, it's, all over it. <laughs> it's about keeping. Aaron, keeping Aaron your... needs to get off. The... 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to. I need to get some more sleep. Um, <laughs> keeping, oh, keeping your mindset strong through the COVID chaos. Um, so, <laughs> I am so good at this. Uh, anyway. You're holding it together, Aaron. It's all good. We're following. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to this because, um, like I said, um, like in your in your previous talk, Verena, it was. Um, I, I find it rare to to have someone that talks about mindset in such a like practical like you can do this very structured let's get better out of you way um you know it, it, it's it's no bullshit and um and that's fantastic so i'm really uh really this looking... is where i need to scramble and delete all the bullshit now don't you <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you set that bar. <laughs> yeah. bar too high well it's over to you to deliver now <laughs> that's me Thanks, sales Aaron. done sales done <laughs> Awesome. Right then. Uh, right, let's do the screen sharing thing first. Hold on. Um, that one. Share. Here we go. How's that? Can everybody? Yep. Yeah. There we go. Yep. All good. Yep. Excellent. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is actually, it's quite nice to, to pick up where James left off, actually, because the first step in in anything is to is to beat that stress and you know just find yourself get yourself into a more of a zen state or at least calmer than you were from there you then got to try and shift yourself from the fret and the worry and the negativity into something more positive where you're then recharged you're geared up again and ready to pursue something which is a whole other a whole other animal um so, I mean, I imagine a lot of you have probably heard numerous people saying, uh, you know, you've got to find the opportunity in this and just come out swinging. And, um, you know, we all hear that and go, right, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, how, how do I do that? Because you've got concerns about, you know, your children, you know, your children's education and just taking care of them every day. You've got the economy and what's going on with that, or rather isn't going on too much with that. Um, you've got you know the change everyone keeps going on about the new normal no one knows what that is but hey ho um, you've got and bearing in mind no one likes change even at the best of times even when it's good change we know it's coming we don't like it, it doesn't sit comfortably with us um, if you have employees you're worried about them as well so it's not just about you um, your health and the health of your family your mental health as well and your goals do you shift them do you pivot do you alter them slightly or do you stick with it and just hope for the best with all of that going on in your head, how are you supposed to find the opportunity and come out swinging? It's a very difficult thing to try and do. This, I mean, I'm, this I actually am going to step on James's toes a little bit. It does overlap massively, um, but it's so true. That why is it so hard? Exactly as James is pointing out, back in caveman days when our subconscious mind was evolving, we had one objective to our day, and that was to avoid death. If you avoid death at the end of the day, it's been a good day, success. Whereas now, modern goal is enjoy life, pursue something, build something, grow something. So it's a very different set of criteria that we're after. And of course, the, the problem with that is in order to avoid death, all you really have to do is look out for the risks and either, as James said, punch them in the face when they come along or leg it. That's it. You, you don't have to focus on your strengths. You don't have to focus on positives and opportunities. It's just not necessary. So that part of our brain that deals with all of that is still in that very primal state. So naturally, our instincts, you know, take, tell us to just hone in on those risks. So we start to exaggerate the chances of something bad happening massively overestimate that we also overestimate the consequences of that bad thing happening and our ability to deal with it so we you know, we massively underestimate our ability to handle the consequences to anything negative that happens because it, it, you know again if you're just trying to survive your brain has no interest in bigging you up and going you can do this you can handle it take it on just see what you can do test your limits don't test your limits just run and hide so that's still how we're wired. So that's why it is so difficult, particularly at times like this, to 
look at anything other than the threats and the risks and the dangers that are around us. So solutions. Go back to basics. This is something that I've done, even you know, forget COVID-19. This is something that I've had to do with a number of my clients over the years, because it's the type of stuff that you think about right at the very beginning, particularly if you're a business owner, you think about it right from the start. And then once you get going, you forget to look back and check on it again. So first things first, what do you want? I mean, you know, given the fact that you are about to go in to, and fight for something, you know, you've got a big, big mountain to climb and there's nothing worse than getting to the top of that mountain to realize that you were climbing the wrong mountain. So why battle through if you don't really want what you're battling for? So the first thing that I would recommend that anybody does in this situation is reassess. Some people are having to, unfortunately. Some people are being, I say unfortunately, I don't think it is unfortunate actually. I've had a couple of clients who are completely changing their direction and they're really excited about it. They're starting from square one and it's kind of been forced upon them, but they're happier than they've ever been or than they've been in a long time because it's given them the perfect excuse to pursue what they really want. If you're starting from ground zero anyway, why not? So check your direction. You know, am I still on course to achieve something I actually want at the end of it? Am I enjoying this? Am I just tolerating this part of my life so I can get to retirement and enjoy that? You know, you've really got to assess that and go back to basics and think about what that is. Because once you've done that, if you refocus on it and you get a very clear picture in your head, you know, being able to see that clearly in your mind is most of the way to believing that it's possible. And it's halfway to actually being there. Because of course, if you don't believe you can get to some, somewhere, then what's the point? There's not going to be any motivation there at all. So to make sure that you can still believe it, you've got to be able to see it in your mind's eye. Sounds a little bit, um, you're almost mystical, a bit kind of, you know, if you see it, you can believe it, but you've got to believe it before you can see it. Um, the reality is genuinely the brain doesn't know the difference. And this has been tested. Neuroscience has proven this time and time again. It does not know the difference between if you sit and imagine something with great clarity and detail, it doesn't know the difference between that and something that actually happened. That's why if you have a really vivid dream and you wake up the next morning and you're still feeling emotionally connected to whatever happened in that dream, your brain doesn't know the difference. Just fired off all the same emotions that it would if it really happened. Um, and as I say, this is scientifically proven. If you can visualize something in great detail, your brain thinks it happened. And therefore, of course, it believes it can happen because it just did. So it's, it's worth doing. Get that picture as clear as you possibly can. Next thing I would suggest that you do is to pay attention to what is certain. We've got so much uncertainty around us at the minute. We don't know what's happening. We don't know whether it, when lockdown is going to end, what, what it's going to look like when it does. Um, we've got a massive economic downturn, which Rishi Sunak just you know, told us it's the worst we're ever going to hit. Thank you for that. That was that lifted everybody's spirits. Um, you know, all of this is happening that we don't know about. We tend to, again, because our brains are wired to look for the threats, we ignore the stuff that we still know. And there is some of that stuff around. I've thrown a few examples together, just literally off the top of my head. They won't be true for everybody, um, but it's just to give you an idea of the type of stuff you could be thinking of. So for one thing, what you want, even if you're hazy on the specifics, your why for doing whatever it is that you're doing should still be certain. If that's not certain, then that was a problem before COVID-19. So that's something you really need to look at. Um, what others want, you know, if there was a market before, there's a good chance there will be again. So then it becomes a question of time. I know obviously it's still stressful, because you're probably thinking, yeah, but Karina, I can't afford to just tread water until the economy's good again or whatever, or the tourism industry picks up again. Um, that's fine, but it's a very different headspace to be in. If you're looking at it from the point of view of, yeah, but I do really want this and I know there's a market for it. If you're just filling a gap, that's a very different mindset to be in compared to, oh, forget it. It's done. So, so if you, you can, if there's a market, there's a market. So it's a very different approach. What you need to do to reach those people let's be honest, the whole digital thing was taking off long before COVID-19 happened. 
um, you know, social media and so on and so forth. These are things that we always had to be paying attention to. And now more than ever, that hasn't really changed. So we know that that's still certain and it's still a positive step that you could be taking. Similarly, the economy's never failed to bounce back up again. It's never crashed and just stayed down there. And the interesting thing about that is, again, it does, you, you get this sort of treading water feel, but at the same time, if you know it's coming, you can prepare, you prepare that's a word, you can prepare for it. Um, you, know, you know more now than you have ever done. You are better prepared now than you ever were before. Um, I had a conversation with um, a client of mine. He's, he's part of a, a very successful hedge fund. And he's, I was checking in and I thought, God, I hope it's, you know, the market's not doing great. I hope he's okay. And he said, um, he said, we're doing great. And he said that the changes that they made in response to the credit crunch, so the crash of 2008, have left them so much better prepared for this crisis. You know, he said, obviously, we didn't know this was going to happen. We didn't know there was going to be a virus sweeping the nation. But because of the, the way we pivoted back then and the systems that we implemented to enable people to work from different locations, for example, and numerous other bits and pieces and obviously what they've done with the money and investing and all that stuff. He said it's weirdly left us you know, a little bit more bulletproof, if you can be a bit more bulletproof um, yeah, than they ever were before. So you are in that position. That is certain. You know more about this type of crisis now than you did back then. So you can future-proof your business a little bit or future-proof yourself a little bit. So there are things to cling on to, certainties that you can cling on to. Once you're clear on what those are, now you can reassess your plan. Um, there, there are numerous different ways in which you can do this. Um, creating a goal map is one of them. Um, it doesn't have to look like this. I've used XMind. I don't know if any of you use XMind. I love it. It tidies my brain up. I think it's just it's a great tool to use. Um, but there's Trello. There's numerous other digital ways to do it. Or you might be a simple, you know, pencil and paper person. Either way, get it out of your head and onto paper. If you leave it cluttering around, it's it, honestly you won't sleep. <laughs> you won't, you know, be able to focus on anything. It will just niggle away at you. So, goal maps are brilliant start with the goal work backwards just start throwing stuff down onto the paper or onto the screen of what needs to happen to make that goal work um it's really obvious stuff but like i say this is returning to basics and unfortunately the the deeper you go into the the business world and the longer you've had your business the more you start to look for fancy answers and fancy solutions to things when really Back to basics this is all you need you just need to get stuff in order in your brain um you know as i say look back over what it is that you really want and make sure you're on track to head for that don't worry if you don't know every single step along the way in the journey again you've all heard this before this isn't news this isn't you know a new concept that you haven't stumbled across but we do tend to forget it um, when we're fraught with uncertainties, our brain is just looking at what we don't know, because what we don't know equals a risk, which means that's what it needs to hone in on to protect us. The reality is, you know, like the, the, the headlamp analogy um, sums it up best. If you got in the car and drove off somewhere at night and you've never been there before, so you're just, you know, looking for directions and road signs and whatnot, you don't do look at this view on your screen and freak out because you can't see every turn and you don't know where to go. And where's the turning? I can't see the turning. You don't, there's no need for that because your headlamps will show you the way to a certain extent. As you move forward, you'll start to see the road signs and you'll have plenty of notice. You'll see the turn when it's coming. And if you don't and you end up on the wrong track, you do a UE and you come back. Life is no different. And the reality of this is, this is something that you guys have been doing forever. Um, you know, the, the, there's a temptation to put pressure on yourself at this stage to know exactly how you're going to come out of this and know every single step before you get there. When have you ever, with any certainty, picked a strategy for your business that you have known with 100% certainty is going to work? I don't know any business owner that's ever done that. I don't know any manager that's ever done that. The whole point that you need to remember about leadership 
what separates a good leader from the rest of their team is the fact that they are comfortable with not knowing and with not being certain. And I don't know how long you guys have been going for, but if, if you've been in the business for any length of time at all, you've proven your worth on that score. You can't start up a business without being a little bit comfortable with being uncomfortable <laughs> and you know the uncertainty and all that kind of stuff. Um, you're used to it. This is not something you haven't faced before. The problems are different, the uncertainties are different, but it's always been there. And it doesn't hurt to actually remember so that you can differentiate, pick apart the stuff that was always uncertain against the new stuff. Because we tend to lump it all together and go, oh my God, I don't know anything. I suddenly am like a rookie again. I've no idea what to do. The reality is, no, no, no. Filter through it, sift through it. Some of this stuff you were never sure of and you were fine with it before COVID-19 happened. So know the difference. And remember, it is okay to be uncertain. And as I say, if you really reflect, I reckon most of you guys are completely used to it, used to that. It's probably how you live your day-to-day -day life a lot of the time. So in summary, I mean, I've kept all of this very short because I know that we are pushed for time. Key steps, keep the vision clear in your mind. Know exactly what you want and exactly where you're headed. It, I mean, I say that, the, the one struggle that I do find that clients have is that they say, look, I have a rough direction in mind. I'm not hundred percent sure. I don't have that specific, this with all these details, this exact amount of money, this exact amount of customers and this and that expand by this time. If you don't have the detail, that doesn't matter. There is a certain sort of vagueness that can actually be quite comforting because it means that you can pivot. It means that you are flexible. So that's fine if you're not clear on the exact details, but know at least that you are headed in a direction that you wanna go in, that you're in a business that you're actually interested in and so on and so forth. Paint a picture with as much detail as you can muster. Keep that clear in your head because that vision will feed your belief in the possibility that, can ha that it can happen. And that belief will feed your motivation. That way you will actually take action and avoid that sort of third option that James mentioned in his talk with that bunny in the headlights. I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know, that kind of, where you freeze and you go, oh, it's, I just don't know. If you can get that picture clear, you'll, be, you'll feel more comfortable to just start moving. Because seriously, just getting started is half the battle. As I say, with the car analogy, if, you, if you're going the wrong way, and I say that with the bunny ears, because, there isn't really a wrong way. We have a tendency to think of life as a journey and therefore that you can take a wrong turn and end up at the wrong destination. The reality of the situation is life isn't linear like that. It doesn't work that way. Um, if you find yourself on a rocky path, sometimes it leads you to a destination that was even better than the one you imagined. Similarly, you can just as easily about turn and go a different way. Sometimes you have to go down the rocky, horrible path just to know that wasn't the right one. Do you know what I mean? It was the only way to learn that lesson. So just take action, just get started. Finally, and this is absolutely crucial, be selective about what you feed your mind with. Um, what I mean by that is, um, quick show of hands, if, do you all have something that, that pops into your head when you think of something that inspires you? It could be a film, it could be a song, it could be reading someone's story or a blog or anything like that. Have you got something like that? Can you just put your hand up if you do? Brilliant. There you go. Is that everybody? Almost everybody. Great. So that really, immerse yourself in that. Why wouldn't you? There's the temptation all of this, again, because we are wired to look for the threats. The temptation is to have the news on in the background all the live long day. I'll just check in again. I'll just swipe and get my headlines on my phone or I'll quick read the paper because there might be something in there that I've missed. You're not missing anything. Check in once a day if you have to. Otherwise than that, feed your mind with, this, with the good stuff, the stuff that actually makes you feel geared up, charged, motivated. And do it, you know, I've, I've, I'm setting up a... Um, I've just relaunched a podcast called The Mindset Cafe, which is designed for exactly this. The idea is that there should be a selection of things that you have written down, your go-tos for how you get recharged and re-inspired. Make sure you consciously, in the same way that you pay attention to your diet, just as James was saying, you should be paying attention to your diet for your mind as well. Don't surround yourself with stuff that's depressing. 
and brings you down and just reminds you of the risks and the threats and uh, your brain won't miss them trust me it's looking for them so you won't miss anything give yourself permission to indulge immerse yourself in that stuff that inspires you and makes you feel good because it'll take you a very very long way okay again short and sweet <laughs> i figured some of you yeah might be nearing bedtime i don't know so yeah any questions um I'll, I'll jump in first actually um uh, so so much first off thank you uh because so much of that is uh, just stuff that absolutely you know stuff that it just resonates and also reminding me of a few things that i've learned but subsequently forgotten and then hearing it again you're like of course that <laughs> you know? um, basic, yeah and, and especially the uncertainty, I'd, I'd almost go as far as to say that the, the entrepreneur seeks uncertainty, you know, that's, yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's the, the kind of, you know, that's where the opportunity is. Um, exactly. one of the things that, um, I was always kind of, I guess, uh, made me curious. I, I, I can kind of, I can do one thing and, uh, and I can do that one thing well. Um, but if I then have to do two things, I, I can completely fall apart. But there are a lot of people, and especially in my business, there's, like, there's a lot of people that can do multiple things and do them well. And um, I'm just kind of wondering, how does one, how does concurrency, if you can do multiple things, then how do you organize that in your mind? And if you're like me and can only do one thing, then how do you, how do you really kind of deal with conflicting, um, uh, uh, conflicting kind of priorities effectively? Do you mean, do you mean in terms of literally just the task at hand or do you mean two projects, two goals at once that you're pursuing? Do you mean like long term? Like, like the task, the task at hand. I've, I've okay. woken up, I've got to, um, I've got to do, X, Y, Z, A, B, and C, but I've got to do A and C at the same time because they've got, um, you know. They're linked in some way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. I mean, in that situation, generally speaking, we can't focus on two things at once. Um, I, I don't know if there are any exceptions to that. I don't think there are. Um, what the reality is, is that people who appear to be good at doing two things at once, are actually just good at flitting, switching their mind, their focus from one task to another quickly. Mm. Um, you can't have the two in your mind at once. There are tests to do with this. You know, when you listen to two people speaking at once, yeah. and it's just it's gobbledygook. You can't separate the two. Mm. Um, so I think unless the two are linked, don't even attempt it. Because generally yeah. speaking, if your focus is halved and you know, split 50-50 between two things, so will your attention, so will the quality of the work be. You know, because you're mm. just not putting yourself into it as, as, as much. Um, so yeah, I would avoid it. That said, if there are occasions where you are literally having to juggle because it's just the nature of whatever it is that you're dealing with, um, it depends on the time span. I mean, doing two things at once that are connected, you're, it technically merges them and brings them into one project again mm. um but if you're flitting i mean the the, the one tip that's that's worked for a, a couple of clients is <laughs> write yourself a note that literally just has two points on it two questions what was i about to do and why was i about to do it because those <laughs> usually are the things that take ages to recap on you go what it was a uh, and you go, yeah you take ages and you're fumbling and you're going oh i don't know what i was doing and then you well, it looks like I was going to do that, but why was I doing that? So if you literally just scribble on a notepad, if you have a <laughs> post-its or something at your desk, whatever, and you have, what was I about to do? I was about to do X, Y, Z. Why? Because. Then that yeah. way, if the minute you come back to it, you can recap and go, okay, that's okay. I get it now. And you're off and running. So it saves on that up ramp time to get back to where you were before. Yeah. yeah. As I say, otherwise than that, though, I would strongly recommend not trying to juggle two tasks at once. Excellent. <laughs> Any other questions? I, I have a question. When you when you showed the goal map um, earlier, um, I, I've gone down that process before using mind maps. It's a similar thing. Um, I, I find that you know you said set a goal, but how how big does that goal need to be? Because you know you, you could end up with a goal that then leads to another goal that leads to another goal. 
which yeah. then becomes quite a mess. Um, it can be quite a complex map. So how, how, do you, how do you go about keeping that map simple? If, if I were you, I think there's, there's a lot to be said for going with your instincts. Um, trying to follow someone else's step-by-step -step guide of how you should organise your brain is ridiculous because it's your brain, do you know what I mean? And you'll, you'll get a gut feeling for where you want your head to be at because you know the bit that's niggling. I don't know if you've ever done this, but I've certainly done this where you, you sit and you think, well, I, I know I should start here. But my brain's over here somewhere going, yeah, but this is this. I want to pay attention to this. I want to do this. And I've discovered in recent years that I'm better off just addressing this, going where my instincts take me and you know, starting to chunk that down. If it becomes apparent that there's a step in here that divides nicely out into another goal or another project or whatever it happens to be, or that it links in with that original one, then all of a sudden you've discovered the tie and you could either interlink the two so you can see how they marry up, which actually is quite useful in terms of time management later down the line because you can see how this is benefiting this. Um, you know, or you can just kind of put that link in and then go, right, I'll deal with that later. What's the next step? And then you come back to this one and you sort of mean. Um, but yeah, I think there's, there's definitely no criteria for how big the goal needs to be. Um, okay. you know, it, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's good I've got a question. Um, hi, Maddie. I didn't, I didn't, I was late to the party, so I didn't introduce myself earlier, but I'm video production is my main, my main thing. Um, awesome. I, so from a, maybe some advice, I don't know, throw this out to the room as well. I'm at a point where half of what I do is in front of people. So can be social distancing but people aren't quite trusting that yet and then half of what I do is at my desk um, and I know that a lot of people are pivoting a lot of people are trying to do workshops webinars lots of different stuff but I'm kind of stuck at a point where I think hmm, do I go down that route and do I just kind of make good on the situation but actually potentially neglect what I do love doing and the rest of my business um, but to do that properly or do I just try and make sure that I'm prepared for the other side of this when we come out and which to pursue because I could I could start writing video workshops how to do things and and how to do zoom and all that kind of stuff but I'm not sure that's the right route so generally so, are you recommending yeah. people do kind of pivot and go down a route that's not their ordinary just for this period or I don't know there might not be a right answer to that but that's, I mean, it is, you're, you're absolutely right. It is very personal to you and it depends. I mean, this is why, um, this is why it's so useful to be clear on what's certain. It sounds to me, Maddie, as though you are quite certain about the direction you want to be headed in. Is that right? Mm. That you know, you know what you enjoy doing and what you're best yeah, at. I know what I love. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that no matter what happens and how long this period lasts, you're going back to that because that's what you do best and that's not going away. Everyone's yeah. still going to need it and want it and so on and so forth. So that's good. So that's the certain bit. So really what's sort of screwing you up in terms of your, your head is the time. How long is this going to last? And is it worth you know, pouring your time into these other issues instead? Is that right? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Also that you see, you know, you see a lot of people that are doing it and then some people that aren't. I'll, I'll be in rooms with people where, for example, on networking, I'll, there'll be a, H and, a health and safety person in one and then another one in another in another group. And the first person will be like, our, our business is completely shut down and we don't have any business because we're going in and we're showing people how to resuscitate a fake body, right? And then there's this other person who comes along and goes, right, I had a really crap couple of weeks and then we just decided to go online and everything's online. And the, the difference between the two people is, is so stark, you know, and, and from a mindset perspective and their own health, you know, you can see how it's yeah. affecting people differently. They've got the same skill set, they've got the same access to, to yeah. online things but they're, they're approaching it differently and I suppose that mindset is that, that maybe the first person doesn't want to go down you don't, they don't want to try something it's back to the change that you were talking about they yeah. don't necessarily want to try something different because yeah. they don't know I mean I don't want to try something for two or three months because I go in when I when I try to do something I really try to learn you know as much as I can about it and I feel like I'll lose sight of what I yeah. currently do yeah that makes perfect sense. And actually, you're right. The, a key part of the, the difference between those two mindsets is one of them's busy, the other one's waiting. 
Right. And it's, I mean, if you, because obviously a part of this is whether it's going to cost you anything to, yeah. to pivot in that way. Yeah. Um, at which point you've got to start weighing up whether or not it's a worthwhile investment for the long term. Is it something you could continue to offer even once the restrictions are lifted and all that kind of thing? Um, but the, the key thing I would say is, I mean, if, if it's, if cost isn't an issue and it's mm. something that you could set up pretty cheaply, um, if, if that's all you can do at this point in time, mm. it might well, from a mindset point of view, be worth just throwing yourself into it. Because even yeah. if you get so far into it and the restrictions are lifted and your, your business as usual takes off and starts booming, um, you've lost nothing. Even if you abandon that, as I say, this is money aside, obviously yeah, that yeah, yeah, makes yeah, a difference. Yeah. But if it's, if it's minimal investment, what you've actually done is poured your, yourself into something so that you are focused, you're busy and you're active it could boom, it could take off and all of a sudden you've got an added stream of income, mm. um, you know, an additional branch to your original business, or you might look at it and go, well, you know, worst case scenario, that felt like a bit of a waste of time. The reality is it won't have been a waste of time if it's kept you busy and occupied, if you've learned more about the market that you're serving and you know, you're, you're learning the whole way through sure. and you've been busy and it's kept you, kept you going. So yeah. I think it's that thing of, if you've got nothing to lose, go with it. Okay. Lovely. So, yeah. Just, great. I, yeah. I was going to add to Karina about Maddie. It's actually one of those things, if you can put onto social media as a marketing point, it keeps your name in mm. people's heads yeah. for when you come out of lockdown, your name isn't forgotten. So even if you're just doing it, not fully, mm. just doing it a bit and a bit rubbish, not even in that you don't go for the whole hog you just go you know i'm going to do a bit of it yeah. now i'm going to put myself out a bit there and keep the name just churning out in the wide world then you won't be forgotten mm. when you get to the other yeah. side because those people who are all on the internet shouting constantly their names possibly will be remembered afterwards <laughs> Yeah, we hope. Good point. Yeah, yeah. And just yeah. as a, that simple marketing. Also, that I was reading something a couple of weeks back about how big events change how people think. So we as a we like to be the same. We like to do the same thing over and over again, even if we're not completely happy. And there was a big research in America that said that certain life events, e.g., getting married, moving house, changing job, having kids. Were, it gave our mind the opportunity to decide to do something different in our life, whether it was decide to change our taste buds, as simple as that, and go, we like this food now. Whereas this is like yeah. this massive event for all of us. So we have all mm. got this opportunity to go, well, what do I like? What do I want to change? And just change it. Because you've got everything's different. And if you accept that everything's different, then you can do you can do whatever you like you can be whatever you like you can quit your job try that <laughs> you know yeah turn from turn from meat eater to vegetarian become an alcoholic if you're not or be, be, <laughs> lose the alcohol. It's, you've got that opportunity this is sort of this opportunity to, to turn it around look mm. at your business as well and go what about my business do i not like how can i get rid of that part and just do what i like but yeah we've got to be the yeah. marketing head says as well be in the space yeah, be yeah totally and I, that resonates definitely because that's what i tell people that i work with it's just sometimes it's not i'm i'm i totally take it i'm a perfectionist so doing things kind of a little bit is really difficult and not doing things to the, my, to the best of my ability is actually really difficult which is why it's always a bit like should i try because i know that it's a potentially a long journey ahead but i do i need yeah. to get better at just being there in little bits yeah Thank well you. that's i'm exactly like you we've been doing all these webinars as a thing to keep our name in there but i'm not a natural video editor so i'm going mm. through and editing these videos for our webinars thinking i could be i could do this better and i've had to have somebody else go don't worry if they're a bit rubbish it's fine yeah 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 Just, you know we, we know this is for now they're great That'll there's a lot do. of forgiveness around as well at the moment i think everybody yeah. knows that yeah. everyone is is trying their best so there's a lot of um buffer isn't there exactly this is the opportunity to be a, a bit rubbish and everyone will go well, we're all working from home so it's all fine <laughs> you know <laughs> I just just to kind of tag on to this and uh uh and tag on to kind of um 
you know, this conversation. The question that has been kind of floating around in various guises um, that I think might be helpful for everyone thinking about pivoting their business is, were we not in lockdown, would this be a good idea anyway? Mm. And I've, I'm finding that a lot of businesses that I'm speaking to are like, we should have been doing this anyway. This has accelerated <laughs> our plans. This was in the pipeline. You know, it's, you know, it's just brought it forward six months. Um, and so, you know, I'd urge you to ask, ask yourself that question. Uh, um, you know, are, are, are these kind of um, um, these online, uh, online courses and things, um, uh, you should you have been doing them anyway? Um, um, and then, and then two more points. Um, uh, one, um, done is better than perfect. <laughs> Um, like Look more done, agile. Done being perfect. <laughs> uh, apart from in civil construct, like in civil engineering, <laughs> <laughs> done pretty much beats perfect across the board. Um, and then secondly, like you don't have to do it all yourself. Um, you you know that like who who is out there that is 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 correlated? Who can you who can you ask to to help you with like you know? help you set up i mean already between like you and jig jig's like i'm not i'm not a particularly great editor and you're like i don't really know how to run webinars like there's <laughs> yeah. do you know what i mean there's there's already yeah exactly there's already synergy there like um yeah. and you know you can you as you can come together and, and win create those win-win situations um so cool i like that <laughs> any more questions for uh, karina Right. Only, um, that I, I totally agree with the uh, be selective about what you fill your mind with. Um, I mean, I I don't know what other people think, whether I'm just getting my head in the uh, sand here, but um, I got so fed up with the news during the last three years on Brexit, um, and it didn't take too long for me to get into the same mindset about the news with COVID. So I actually don't bother with the news i used to be a news hand i'd listen to today i'd go on to the news at 10 blah 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 now i just ignore it all my wife's a biologist so if there's anything important she'll tell me so um i don't know whether people think that that is uh i'm, I'm sort of like an ostrich or, or what but um it's working for me that's all i can say yeah no i agree with you completely brian i think that it's it's not a case of burying your head in the sand. It's not like you're pretending COVID-19 doesn't exist. Do you know what I mean? If, if, you, if people are talking about a virus and you're going, what virus? There's a problem. But, yeah. you know, if, if you've got all the major points, and as you say, news filters through really quickly and easily these days anyway. Um, you know, if you've only got to, you know, listen to the radio for five minutes and it's popped up again, or, you know, just hear the headlines once and it's there. We, it, it doesn't change, and unfortunately. I mean, I've been a journalist, so I know how the system works. And what they will do is they'll take the one little bit of news and then they'll rewrap it and repackage it over the course of the day in a hundred different ways. So it's, it, by the end of the day, it sounds like a new piece of news. It's not. It's exactly the same information there was at the beginning. So, yeah, and that, that can go on and on and on ad nauseum. So it's, yeah, it, you won't be missing anything exactly that. And it's not worth immersing yourself in it. Because, if it, again, it's that same old adage about if you can't fix it, stop looking at it um you know focus yeah. your mind on the things that you can fix Thank i'm you. the same i only listen to the headlines literally once a day and then that's it i got fed up with it listen to yeah. the same thing and worrying about something that i can't do nothing about so i just took yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the thing. we've all got a responsibility to do what we can but once we know mm. that we're doing that leave it alone you know what i mean keep doing yeah. that and do something else at the same time and, that, and that's the thing as well. It's um, like going back to what James was saying about like, you know, um, like the kind of dopamine responses and things like that. Um, the, the, the push notifications, you know, there's a, there's a darker side of it because push notifications, your phone buzzing, oh, there's someone likes, um, you know, little hearts, whatever it is, they're all giving your brain those little rewards. Um, and then, then, then that's when you really realize like what a, what a strong, um, you know, opiate-like uh, drug dopamine is, uh, and and you know this this is this is effectively the game now. <laughs> you know, this is the game that people play. <laughs> how can we give you a little dopamine hit so we mm. so you give us your attention for um, yeah. you know however long? So 
I think there are tools that you can use out there. I, was, I looked a lot into demetrification or demetrication recently, where you can just get a, an app on your phone where it, it won't, it hides all the notifications. It hides the likes, it hides the, not the comments necessarily, but it will hide all the, you know, the, the interaction that doesn't really mean anything. Mm. And um, the article that I was reading, I was, I loved 95% of it. And at the end she was like, I'm going to go back to turning the notifications on. And I thought, oh, no, you just completely ruined your whole article because the whole article was just about how empowering it made her and how she was no longer thinking about it. You know, she'd put up an article and she wouldn't be able to see how many people liked it. She wouldn't be able to see whether she was trending on Twitter. So she just, it was just there and it existed yeah. and she was happy for oh. that. Uh, and then she yeah. got 80 in, in, her, in her conclusion. But it's, it's, uh, it would be nice, wouldn't it? I've heard actually that the BBC, I was listening to it on a podcast, they were... There was somebody that was trying to measure people's mental health. So you would go on, you would go before you went on to a, on something like the BBC, it would ask you how you were feeling that day. And you'd say, I'm feeling a little bit anxious maybe. And then anytime that a, a news article came up that might trigger or might make that worse, it would kind of blur it out. And it would say, wow. um, you, you might not want to look at this. You know, you can still, but this might make your feelings of anxiety that you told us earlier a little bit worse. <laughs> That wow. surely would backfire because if that was me, if I if I'm feeling you anxious, you'd go, and they'd I want to see it. You may not want to see this. I'd be like, yeah. what? What's happened? Yeah. Self deprecation. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I think there's an element of the, you know, when you're feeling bad, you kind of like you feed that as well by feeding worse. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was a really interesting idea. Yeah. That, that is brilliant. That is, <laughs> I'm I'm totally in that camp as well. It's uh, you know, you might not want to see this. And I'm, my brain goes, you definitely need to see this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Karina, thank you so much. Um, that, was a, that was a fantastic talk. Um, and yeah, I, yeah, I, I just, it resonates so deeply with me. It's a, it's, it's a little embarrassing, actually. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so uh, seamless use of, uh, seamless switching of screen sharing there. Um, our next meetup is Wednesday, the 17th of June. Um, uh, and we've got Lily Deadman and Bruce Kidd, um, both, uh, both, uh, KDM regulars and um, yeah I'm really looking forward to uh, Lily's talk um, those who know Lily she's uh, an accessibility um, uh, activist um, so I'm really looking forward to this um, and uh, yeah uh, Lily's going to be giving us a disabled guide on on accessibility um, sp you know, specifically online accessibility uh, which is a thing that it's just you know you just don't Think if you're norm if you're normally sighted if you don't have any kind of like um, like disabilities, it's so easy to just completely overlook it. And um, accessibility online typically sucks. And I mean, you know, uh, this is kind of uh, across the board because of um, just ignorance, effectively. Um, and you know, I'll hold my hand up and say, you know, we're we're, we're guilty of it as well. Um, so I'm really looking forward to kind of uh, seeing what we can learn about that. Um, and then uh, Bruce is going to be talking about uh, gamification, um, which is something I think we could all all do with. Um, uh, yeah, especially now that we're at home, basically looking at screens for nine hours a day. Um, so yeah. Come along, register in the same place if you've enjoyed it and you think there's someone else that might enjoy um, coming along to it. Um, yeah, let them know. Uh, get them to sign up to the old um, KDM meetup page. That's what it is. Um, so, yeah, feel free to um, hang around. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thanks to our speakers, uh, James Blair and Karina Holstrom. Um, thank you all for coming along and making and, and like inputting to this meetup. because This is really what it's about. It's, uh, it's just about kind of making these connections and having these interesting conversations. So thank you all for your input. Uh, feel free to um, hang around if you want. If not, like, then we'll just kind of, yeah. We'll see you next month. <laughs> this is, yeah, so this awkward. Is, yeah. <laughs> this is like, I'm so bad. I need to get a lot better at it's like kind of closing cues. things off. 
The social yeah. cues in Zoom are so difficult. Like, yeah. it's such, it's so aggressive. Like, like, like leaving a meeting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> disappear. Yeah. What we need to do is use the Zoom feature that you can have that background picture, but it's actually a picture of you in the background. Oh, I've seen someone do this. <laughs> Sneak off yeah. a picture of you. Yeah. <laughs> and then someone asks you a question, and you're just like. <laughs> oh my god! Honestly, like some people are so still. So, like Jade, there were a couple of moments when I'm like, "Is he still here? Has he left?" Like, it's uh, just like just you're so just still at points. <laughs> focused. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can still be talking from somewhere else, but with a static picture. Yeah. <laughs> you're actually doing the washing up somewhere. Yeah, actually, not in the kitchen at the moment. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, I saw one where um, a guy had printed off a picture of himself sort of sat at the desk like that and um, he was he was behind the picture and he'd lined it up perfectly and he was behind the picture having a beer and then the picture fell down and he's like in his hammock having a beer and he's like... No! <laughs> Amazing. I wonder when they'll get deep fake on, uh, on Zoom. That'd be yeah. interesting, wouldn't it? Could you imagine? Yeah, you just yeah, turn yeah. up looking like someone else or... Ooh. We all start looking like you, Aaron. Yeah, that would be that would be amazing. I, t I tell you what, though, that deep fake, I, I kind of like. I'm I'm particularly worried, um, not only because I just watch too much sci-fi, but I'm like, hang on a sec. So they've got this technology which is basically indis indistinguishable from real life, like when viewed over a digital medium. Um, like you can't tell the difference, and then like. Everyone was like, oh, wow, look at this, deep fake, deep fake, da, 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 da. And then, like, nothing. And now I'm like, hang on a sec. Is that because, like, half of the stuff that I'm seeing is now deep faked? Like, how can you tell? You just, it's how just you like, tell? you know. Yeah. So that's, okay. maybe that's stupid. Is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Or oh, that paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God. Um, well, thanks so much, guys. Sorry, I was late to the party, but it was great. I did listen to both talks, and it was there. it was really, really interesting. I'm Don't worry too your much, Maddie. Both speakers were late to the party as well. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was God. like halfway through, like eating my risotto, and Aaron was like, "Oh, and Maddie wants to ask James a question." I was like, "No, I've just really enjoyed it." <laughs> <laughs> I saw that like you put the you done the the clapping, and I thought, yeah. "Oh, she's put, she's raising a hand." Yeah. Okay, oh. <laughs> there you go. I was like, just love it, love it. And afterwards, like, it was so funny because I came off going, the thing I should have said was... <laughs> <laughs> James exactly knew what was happening in my brain at that moment. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That, that slide thing, did anyone catch the name of that slide thing that you used? That was really cool, I thought. Aha yeah. Slides. Yeah. Aha I Slides. Write that yeah. Down. I, I wrote it. that down, I was pinged off to Nick to have a look at it. <laughs> Karina, what was the road or the goal map thing that you use? X Mind. X Mind, thank you. Yeah. X -Mind. X Mind. Is that a Mac only thing? I think I've heard of it. No, no, it's just it's a it's a there's a free version and a paid version. I've gotten away with just using the free version. I've not needed all the other stuff that goes with it. Um yeah. but yeah, I find it brilliant because it's so easy to use and it just it literally yeah. just sort my brain out. I have mm. you know all the different ideas and go, ah, and then all yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, that's boss a few years ago he used to use that so every time something came up during the week before his next weekly one-to-one -one, he would use a mind map of the different team members that he needed to speak to so when he was speaking to you on his other screen he would look at the mind map for you and the bits that were splintered oh, off it. perfect yeah exactly and the good thing is actually there's a that you can if you have one that happens to shoot off into loads mm -hmm. of different areas you can minimise each branch when you're not looking at it, you sort of mean yeah. so it's not it doesn't just become a mass web of thoughts and ideas. You can kind of minimise these sections and just have this one expanded and so on. It's right. really, it's really useful. I'm not selling it, but it is really useful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking because yeah, that might be quite useful because I've um, I've recently taken to a uh, kind of writing sort of short stories and like you know uh, fiction and nice. stuff like that. And uh, one of the things I really struggle with. Um, is keeping track of all the moving parts, mm. you know. But if I could have, like, map it out by characters or events or th that sort of thing, then then I could I can help with my consistency. Yeah, mm. and there's actually because there's different. Um, 
you can do it sort of flow chart style if you wanted to so that might yeah. lend itself well to a story or whatever with the different characters coming in at different times and so yeah, yeah. that would be a good idea actually all right yeah. excellent i'm on the website uh, well, one thing that's quite interesting about this uh, having these online events um is that uh you, you know, we just experienced the the digital equivalent of like going to the completely wrong address. But you know, <laughs> yeah. that's what James and I were talking about. We were going. It doesn't happen often in real life. You walk in the room and there's no one else in there. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, had this had had this happen, and we've had it happen once. I've had it happen once where um, uh, someone's ended up in Ashford. Uh, you know, west of London, formerly oh, middle, oh, no, like the old yeah. Middlesex. Um, yeah, and and having that awkward conversation when you're like, yeah, you're a good, you're a good eighty miles away. Oh, <laughs> God. Got that a bit wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's yeah. bad. <laughs> that's the yeah. thing. At least this is a really quick fix. We just new link, click, you're done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Back in the car, pay for the parking, go for God's sake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm glad I saw your email because I was just like, me and Aaron were checking because we were on like 50 minutes early, like we did last night, like we never do. And we were like, they're not here. Like, what's going on? You must and have thought we were the worst speakers ever. Oh, Aaron, was like, not with, rocking up. Aaron was like, right, should I get a talk up just in case that I need yeah. to do something? And I was yeah. like, well, just in case. I was like, I really hope they'll turn up. We were like, we're going to have to start letting people in. I was like, it's <laughs> And then I was like, I'll just check my emails again. And I saw your email. I was like, oh. Well, we were really worried because obviously we were thinking, hey, the problem is, like, if anything's gone wrong at your end, kind of thing, or you, know, you're, you guys aren't there. Yeah. We were both kind of discussing it and saying, because I said, I was polite about it. And I said, well, if I turned, if I logged on to like a digital format event, um, and I waited 15 minutes, 20 minutes or whatever it was, and no one rocked up, I'd log out and I'd head off to the living room. Um, and then James went, well, you're polite. He went, I do that in a real life situation. He said, I've got a window of about five minutes that I'll wait and then I'm out of here. Oh, <laughs> <really? laughs> Amen. Uh, yeah, so we found our oh. way eventually. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Uh, Excellent. Right, guys, I'm going to head off. Uh, if anyone wants to stay, I can happily leave the uh, meeting running. I'm going to shoot um, off too, but thanks I'm everyone. Sure. That was yeah. Time to, right. to go. Looking yeah. forward Excellent. to the next one. Thank you very much, Thank guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks, See Megan. Guys. Thanks, Megan. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. 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 End. See ya. Bye. <laughs>